So we're out here on Hill Siakles, or the Tranquil River in Philoquit First Nation Territory, where we're building a series of these big engineered in-stream wood structures using second growth trees in order to replicate the types of structures that would have been present with old growth trees prior to industrial logging. And we're doing this in order to create channel complexity and habitat for fish. See, rivers are incredibly powerful forces and they flow in the path of least resistance, bouncing off harder materials and moving through or displacing softer materials. So historically, big old growth trees and their roots in the soil acted as hard points along river banks, which diverted the water away from them and forcing it downwards to create a narrow, deep and cool channel. When those old growth trees finally did fall into the river, they too diverted the water to create pools, eddies and all sorts of habitat complexity that fish absolutely love. But when these riparian forests were clear-cut logged back in the 60s and then the surrounding hillsides clear-cut logged in the 70s, the complexity of this river collapsed. The lack of mature trees, roots, and understory on the hillsides led to many landslides and erosion, which inundated the channel here with tons of sediments and rocks. The lack of old growth trees along the banks and the floodplains meant that there were no more hard points to divert the river, resulting in widespread erosion and a meandering channel that spread out to get wider, shallower, and hotter. And while channel migration in a river is natural, just a century ago, the main stem was about 300 meters that way on the other side of the valley, moving to its current location here in just 70 years, which is extremely fast as a result of clear-cut logging that removed the forest here. Additionally, with no more old growth trees to fall into the river, complex fish habitat production basically stopped as these smaller second growth trees aren't big enough to form the same type of channel features and are flushed out of the river fairly easily. So as a way to help this watershed recover these ecological processes and to help give our endangered wild salmon populations more habitat to help them survive, we're building a series of these big engineered log structures that have all been specifically designed to work with the river in a particular way. So we start by creating an exclusion barrier, which you can see here, which separates the work site from the main flow of the water, where we then dig a deep pool at the head of the site, then using detailed engineering plans for each structure, we arrange second growth trees with root walls facing forwards, like you can see here, which are then secured with logs driven in vertically. This will force the water down to scour out a pool and then around the structure, flowing here from one hard point to another, creating a deeper meandering channel with more complexity that will allow for salmon to thrive at all stages of life. And then to finish it off, we'll dress the top with soil, old logs, and plant vegetation to help solidify this structure so that it lasts for decades. This structure and all the restoration work we do is no substitute for a healthy river, and it's a heck of a lot easier to protect and conserve than it is to restore, but this work provides a band-aid of immediate habitat to help bolster the rapidly declining salmon populations in this watershed, whose nutrients will help feed the surrounding forests so that one day they may be big enough to maintain this process on their own.